Thank you, Peter. That, that, that's great. And uh, what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to ask uh, Etienne if you can rejoin us as well, please. And also we're going to be joined by a, a third panelist, um, Frédéric Le, who is the technology strategist, strategist at DXC's uh, corporate technology office. Frederick is uh, leading the development of DXC's new Agile Architecture Framework and has over 25 years experience with significant uh, expertise in technology strategy, enterprise architecture, lean, agile and digital. So, uh, Frederick, if you can join us as well, please. And thank you both, um, uh, Etienne and, uh, and Peter. Um, I can, it takes uh, a, a, a short while for... Uh, uh, for a panelist to join us, um, so while while Frederick is coming on, we had a we had a question uh, came in uh, early on, which was um, uh, Frederick's with us now, but let me ask this one anyway. Um, it came in for you, Etienne, and it was uh, it, it was uh, en français, I'm afraid. So um, uh, humour me with my French, um, but it's uh, avez-vous complété l'intégration de Sabsa les étapes de l'info sécurité? Avec une approche agile aussi, il est encore un défi pour nous, which I think means, have you integrated SABSA in information security um, um, steps as well uh, with an agile approach? Because it's still a challenge for us. Is that roughly right? Yeah, I think it's a good translation. Um, it's not only all the what is at stake when you when you transform uh, when you completely transform the model is not only security. We have to face many challenges around the architecture, um, the support function, and uh, the security and the data. For the for these four elements, we we had to to reinvent the way people were uh, were coordinated uh, together. Uh, for security, it was not a big issue for us because. Uh, uh, the, the security aspect are managed outside of the IT department. The IT department is responsible to develop uh, the new patterns, to put them in production and to support what is in production. But the infrastructure itself, in terms of security, is managed by another team, which is, which is uh, at group level and uh, which has followed as well uh, uh, an agile uh, transformation without to uh, dramatically change uh, their processes. So it was not one of our concerns. We had the biggest concern about, uh, about the production itself, the follow-up of the production. And we, I think we, we managed that uh, very properly by putting in place these leaks. I have talked about this leaks mechanism, uh, which is the way to, to, to steer the transversal aspects between, uh, between the different, uh, different tribes. We have a league for the architecture. A league is mandatory in, in our um, organization. Uh, to belong to a league for a tribe is mandatory. So they have to nominate people to belong to this league. And we have three that are mandatory. Uh, we have the production. Uh, we have uh, the architecture. Uh, and now we have the craftsmanship as well, because we, we thought that we had to reinforce the craftsmanship aspects. These are the three leagues that are mandatory in our environment. But to answer the question in itself, security was not in our remit during the transformation. Okay, thank you, Etienne. So, welcome, Frederick. Um, we, we've we've heard from both uh, Etienne and and uh, Peter sharing their experience inside their their organisations. Um, how does what you've heard there relate to the Open Agile Architecture Standard from the Open Group that you've been so instrumental in uh, in driving? Uh, first of all, thank you, Etienne and Peter, for those great presentations. Uh, I would say that uh, many of the theme topics you talked about uh, actually are also covered in uh, open agile architecture. And uh, I will uh, maybe uh, focus on, on a few highlights. Uh, first of all, I, I can see that customer experience, uh, which is one of our first axioms, uh, is really extremely important both for Société Générale and, uh, and Fidelity. Uh, 
the entire transformation uh, ranging from the, the way objectives are defined with the uh, objective and key result, which were mentioned by, by the two presenters, uh, plus uh, the whole transformation of the organization toward agility, the governance, the mindset, and so forth, is also very important. Uh, also, architecture, which uh, comes as, as an important theme uh, and is recognized as one of the disciplines that uh, not only IT but also the business needs to understand. It was so great, and I, I will finish by that last point uh, about platforms. And I think, uh, alongside with uh, what Peter said, platform is becoming uh, more and more important for for the digital transformation, and definitely uh, it's going to be an area of, of growth for for the next. Uh, uh, generation of uh, agile architecture. So th that's in a nutshell, and there would be much more to say, but uh, I think it's uh, the important highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. That's great. So um, uh, let's go over a, a, a question for, for Peter then. Um, you're, you're on mute right now, Peter. Um, but uh, have you have you borrowed any practices from an agile at scale process framework? Um, and if yes, which, and if not, why? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, look, it's a great question. Um, you know, I would say that we, um, you know, we implicitly have, right, in terms of how you deal with the overall portfolio. And, and, and I say implicitly because w one of our overarching um, aspirations was to be really heavily tool-driven. And so, um, you know, as I mentioned Agile Craft, right, which got acquired by um, Atlassian and is now called Jira Line. Um, Atlas, you know, Jira Line really implements SAFE, right? Um, and I say many of the principles at SAFE, particularly from managing holistically at a portfolio level. And so from that perspective, um, you know, we, 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 we absolutely do. Um, and, you know, we've spun up, um, We've had an organization now, maybe about two and a half years into our transformation, mm -hmm. that literally, um, um, you know, educates and and uh, onboards um, domains and tribes, et cetera, et cetera, with that tool. So uh, yes, via the tool. Uh, you know, one of the things, and I'll just say one more thing, John. One is one of the things that we wanted to be really, really careful about is, Fidelity had tried our job before from the IT side of the house. And we really wanted this journey in the transformation not to be viewed as a technology only thing, but really as a set of enabling, um, you know, practices, patterns, and processes intended as driving the value stream. And so we've been very careful not to overemphasize the technology dimension of the enablement but rather the value and the associated process. I mean, so. Yeah. Understood. Thank, thank you, Peter. So, uh, question coming here. Um, what, what changes in, uh, have, go to you first, Etienne, I think. Um, what changes in management systems, planning, or budgeting practices were most challenging? Um, and, and specifically, um, uh, was any area, team, or group more difficult to change, either from a cultural point of view or a process point of view, in terms of decision making or ownership? <laughs> a lot, uh, but let, let's take a uh, question one by one. We, yeah. in terms of um, budgeting, we we've changed everything. We've broken uh, the the per project budgeting process. It was a I can tell you within the investment banking previously during the summer you have you had a period of time maybe other companies uh, know uh, this period of time where you prepare the budget for the next year which was a nightmare it's the it's a race where everyone wants to select uh, many projects of course you select uh, this amount of project and that project uh, when you will have only uh, 20 selected or 100 million euro that you need uh, when uh, you are will on only have 20 it was a nightmare, this process. Uh, we've broken that. We, we switched to capacity management. Capacity management me means that now 
the, the budgeting process is really top down. It comes from the management, discussing the top management of the investment banking, discussing with the top manager of the business, deciding where are the objectives. And depending on the objectives and the main area where we need to invest, they allocate the budget for the year, irrespective of, it's an irrespective, of course, there's a discussion, but it's irrespective of the list of uh, projects that you can uh, select during the summer. So first of all, we switch to capacity management. Once this budget is given to the tribe, it's a given budget for one year. It does not change. It is not because you will have a new project at the beginning of the year coming from the Fed or coming from whoever that you will have more budget. You will have to re reprioritize uh, uh, inside your, ba your backlog. And then we've switched, second element, we switch to resource-based management because now not only it's a capacity-based approach with a fixed budget, but we determine a number of FTE, full-time equivalents at the beginning of the year. So we give you a number of heads that you will have. So we know we, you will not play with the budget by trying to do, oh, I, if I do that uh, in India, if I do this here, etc. I try, I try to do a mix to arrange with uh, the request I have. No, we give you a fixed frame and in this frame, you are forced to prioritize. That's the, the, the key change that we've made. And then who was the, the who were the, the more dif difficult uh, staff to change? I would say, um, first of all, for these processes, it was a long, long journey. Uh, we wanted to switch to capacity management one year after the start of the transformation in 2018. We only switched last year, so we've lost one year because the, the structure was, was not ready. And then we had, uh, I would say, the second one, so top management. And second one uh, are, I would say, the, the transversal functions of the activities. We had a very big support from the beginning from the, uh, the, the market activities, the, the activities with the trader in front of the market. They saw their interest directly of uh, transforming the IT, etc. But when you impact transversal functions like the compliance, like the risk departments, etc. Departments that are living by asking many tribes to do many things, they, they are very difficult to convince that it is their interest as well to switch to this model, which is by nature aligned with the business, with the core business. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna ask a, a question of Frederick, um, if I may. Um, you, you stressed and it, it came out in the in the presentations and you just stressed in your briefs your brief summary of um, of the open agile architecture standard the importance of um, platform um, is you know in in a digital agile transformation what do you think Frederick are the are the critical success factors to shift toward a platform driven enterprise <clears throat> There is one thing that uh, caught my attention in Peter's presentation is that idea of city planning uh, applied to, to platform. And the, the reason why I'm linking that to, to your question, Steve, is that uh, when you uh, create platforms, uh, you, you have a, a, a coordination challenge because that platform is only going to be successful if it meets uh, somehow internal demand and if it's used. Uh, and frankly, <coughs> that coordination challenge uh, cannot only be addressed by uh, either a top-down approach, the generic platform that are mandated by, by the top may not meet <laughs> the needs of the folks who are <laughs> supposed to use them. But on the other hand, if you do not uh, define a minimum set of, of standards of way of approaching it, uh, then you, you will result I into a mess. So uh, navigating between the, those two uh, uh, problems is probably a big challenge. But Peter, I, I would suspect that you, you've got to also insight into that one because I saw in your presentation that you are quite advanced on, on that one. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, Frederick, you're 100% right. I mean, the fundamental issue is, and, and I think that this is the, you know, one of the key learnings from the CSPs, right, the cloud service providers, 
Look, they're very opinionated about their managed services. And there's a reason why they are. And quite frankly, if one pays attention, um, one can leverage tremendous benefit from those architectures. And so we realized that we had to be very opinionated about the standards and practices, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you know, so for example, we've articulated a very concrete set of principles, five to seven, that defines whether you're a platform. And what's ironic about that is the very first one, um, you know, is, is, is actually rather trivial, but rather difficult for most platforms, with, which is, can the consumers of your platform actually utilize it without talking to you, i.e. like a managed service? Now, for many IT built platforms within organizations, that's absolutely not true, right? Um, so, and, and then secondly, you know, the, 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 look, there's a fundamental human desire for individuation. So duplication of capabilities, right? Um, you know, is, is, is really easy um, to, occurs very easily in organizations. And so we wanted, again, to be very opinionated about that, that we had a construct, i.e., this logical grouping of capabilities, and that we were going to use the platform construct as a forcing function for that rationalization, you know, so that we, so that we didn't have uh, duplicative capabilities within silos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Thank you.